You probably already know that right and wrong are the same as correct and incorrect, respectively. These words are also used in a lot of informal expressions and idioms in English, and today I'll teach you 10 of them. If you want to get feedback on what you're doing right and what's wrong in your English, join one of our courses. Many of them include homework that you can send in and get correction from our teaching team. I'll give you more details on that at the end of this video, but first let's learn these expressions. Number one, on the right track. If you're on the right track, it means you are doing something correctly or well. You are going in the right direction. It is often used for following a correct line of thinking. For example, he hasn't solved the math problem yet, but he's on the right track. Everyone hopes that the new president can get the country back on the right track. You can also use on the wrong track to describe going in the incorrect direction or doing something that is likely to lead to bad results. Number two, if you play your cards right. This expression means doing the correct things when using your resources to achieve a desired result. Think about playing a card game like poker. Yes, there is some luck involved, but if you use some skill in utilizing your cards correctly, then you can win the game. For example, if I play my cards right, I might get a promotion by the end of this year, meaning if I do good work and if I impress the right people in the company. She's already mayor of the city, and if she plays her cards right, she could get elected as senator. So in this case, if she performs well and if she gains popularity with the voters. Number three, it serves you right. We use this expression to say that someone deserved the punishment or bad consequence they experienced. It was their fault, so they deserve the negative result. For example, oh, you missed the bus? Well, it serves you right for being late all the time. He's a reckless driver, and yesterday he got a speeding ticket. It serves him right. Number four, his or her heart is in the right place. We use this phrase to describe when someone has good intentions, but the result is not very good or they cause problems without intending to. For example, my daughter made a mess in the kitchen while she was making me breakfast, but that's okay. I know her heart is in the right place. Meaning, she didn't intentionally make a mess to be difficult. She was trying to do something nice. Number five, right on. This exclamation is an informal way to express encouragement, agreement, or support. For example, what this country needs is a better educational system. Right on means I completely agree. I just bought a new car. Right on, what kind is it? In this case, it means that's great. Number six, wrong number. If you dial a phone number and it does not connect to the person you are trying to call, then you might have the wrong number. For example, hi, is Janice there? Sorry, you've got the wrong number. There's no one named Janice living here. Number seven, get off on the wrong foot. If you get off on the wrong foot, it means you do something that makes a bad impression right at the beginning. For example, I got off on the wrong foot by spilling coffee on the boss's desk during my first day at work. Number eight, wake up on the wrong side of the bed. We use this idiom to describe when someone is in an unusually bad mood today. For example, the manager yelled at us three times before lunch. He must have woken up on the wrong side of the bed today. Sorry, I didn't mean to be so rude. Guess I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Number nine, don't get me wrong. We can say, don't get me wrong, before expressing an idea that could easily be misunderstood, and we want the other person to pay attention and understand our specific feelings. This phrase is often used to make criticism a little less intense. For example, I don't think she's the right person for the job. Don't get me wrong, she's a very nice person, but her skills just don't fit the position. So, I'm not saying she's a terrible person, the problem is just with her skills. Sometimes I can't stand my boyfriend. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to break up with him or anything, but there are times when he really annoys me. I don't hate him and I don't want to end the relationship. Number 10, rub someone the wrong way. 
This expression means to annoy or irritate someone. Think about petting a cat or dog. You usually move your hand in the same direction as the animal's fur. If you move your hand in the opposite direction of the fur, it will be unpleasant for the cat or dog. For example, his comment that women aren't good leaders really rubbed me the wrong way. I don't think I could work with someone who holds such views. I like doctors who are warm, patient, and caring. So when I get a doctor who's obviously in a rush, it rubs me the wrong way. One of the hardest things about learning English is not being sure if what you're saying and writing is right or wrong. And one of the great things about many Espresso English courses is that they include opportunities for feedback and correction from our teaching team. Some of our courses have short answer questions where you can get feedback, like our vocabulary builder courses, phrasal verbs, idioms, and advanced vocabulary and collocations course. Inside the reading course and advanced grammar course, there are writing tasks where you can write a paragraph or two and get feedback on that. There are also opportunities to get feedback on your recorded speaking inside the Everyday English Speaking courses. And the pronunciation course and shadowing course both have an end of course speaking evaluation. With this feedback, you can put your English into practice and find out what you're doing well and what needs improvement. I hope to see you inside one of the courses. Thanks for joining me today.